Scenes are a powerful feature in SketchUp that allow you to store and recall lots of different types of information. At the most basic level, scenes allow you to toggle between different camera positions. So it's like creating a three-dimensional bookmark. We'll get into some of the more advanced uses of scenes shortly, but first let's talk about basic scene mechanics. That is how to create, recall, and update scenes. To create your first scene, you have to go to the Scenes window. Click the plus button to add a page. Change your point of view by orbiting or panning and create a second scene. Up at the top of the screen we have different buttons called pages that allow you to access the different scenes you've already saved. I can just click on scene 1 to go to that camera position. So this is a convenient way to move through space and it's the basis of animation. If you want to change a scene you could delete it and create another one but a quicker way is just to make the change and then update the scene by right clicking on the page. You can then choose update. Now the new camera position has been stored in scene 2. Once you have some pages up here you can use the functionality in the right click menu instead of using the scenes window if you prefer. For example I can orbit to a new orientation, right click and choose add to create scene 3. You can reorder scenes by clicking them here in the Scenes window and using these arrows to move them up and down in this list. Now that you understand basic scene mechanics, I'd like to show you a more advanced example. This file was created by Joe Zay, who writes a column in Fine Woodworking. He designs his furniture in SketchUp. As you can see from all the pages at the top, Joe makes extensive use of scenes, and I can't really make out what these refer to because the page sizes are so small. So I'm going to open the Scenes window and open this up. Let's just go through some of the scenes. In the Exploded view, we move over to the side where Joe has pulled all the pieces apart and he's identified them using dimensions and screen text. Some of the scenes are in parallel projection mode such as this one where he has measured dimensions. Some of the scenes use different features of a style such as this one in X-ray mode. You see the style information can be stored in a scene. Click this button to access the full amount of information that is stored within a scene. And you can see right here, all of these different properties can be saved in each scene. Furthermore, Joe has created, in effect, a set of shop drawings within a single SketchUp file by using these scenes. And he does that by toggling layers on and off. You see, these dimensions on this piece of wood are on a specific layer that is shown just in this scene. I'll open the Layers window, and you can see what's happening here. I'll go to another scene, and a different layer is turned on. This gives us information specific to this piece of wood. So Joe is able to manufacture this entire piece of furniture from the information in this single SketchUp file. Keeps everything very organized, as you can appreciate. I'd like to show you another example of scenes, and for this I've opened the Components window. I've done a search for Scene and Section, and I've come up with a list of different files here. And I notice that Bonnie Rosks is mentioned here a couple of times, and she's written a book on SketchUp which is highly recommended. I'm going to click on the word here rather than the icon so that I can open up the little browser. I'll click on Conic Shapes, and here we see it in the browser showing us what's available in 3D Warehouse. I'll click Download Model, but notice down here that she's warning you, do not load it directly into an open SketchUp model. The reason for that is if you do, you won't get any of the scenes. The preferred method is to download the model, and when you're asked this question, you should say no, because you don't want to load it directly into your model. If you say no, you have an opportunity to save it on your hard drive. and then you can go ahead and open that from your hard drive and it will contain the scenes. Now Bonnie has created a tutorial using scenes. We just go to scene 2 to continue learning about this and as I do that see what's happening here. We have a section plane that's animated during the scene transition. We can see that when we take a section of this cone we get a circle. Go to scene 3 and the section plane rotates. So this is an advanced use of scenes in two respects. 
It's a tutorial based on scenes and it's showing you animated section planes. On the most basic level, you saw how scenes can store camera locations. A more advanced way of looking at scenes, however, is to not include the camera location. Let's just see what's possible if we approach it that way. I'll uncheck camera location in the properties to save, and I'll create a scene. Then I'll go ahead and open up the layers window, and turn off the roof. Save a new scene. Let's say we want to make some changes to the style. Let's open up the Styles window and go into Monochrome mode. I'll create a new style for this and save a scene. Then I'll go into X-ray mode, create a new style for this, and save a scene. Let's see what we have here. I'm going to go back to Select and let's just see what happens when I go through. Scene 1 has us in the normal mode. Scene 2 takes away the roof. Scene 3 goes into monochrome. And Scene 4 goes into x-ray mode. Now these scenes work from any camera position. So I can go over here, zoom in, go to Scene 2, and I can see it in texture mode, or in monochrome mode, or in x-ray mode. I can see the roof in Scene 1. So this advanced use of scenes allows you to toggle through layer settings and style settings while giving you the flexibility of moving the camera around independently.